SST is brought to you by Stark Auto Sales, home of the ultimate worldwide scratch and dent car sale. Hey friends, I'm Rick Walker. Welcome to another edition of the SST Car Show. Lots of cool stuff to share with you today, but let's just jump right into it, shall we? With this look at Ford's fifth generation of the Explorer. Here's why it doesn't disappoint and absolutely will surprise you. You're looking at the fifth generation of the Ford Explorer. It was updated with a facelift back in 2011 and there's no question the current Ford Explorer is at the top of its game. This mid-size SUV is in a word refined. The Explorer comes in a variety of trim levels including the base model, XLT, Limited, Sport and the Platinum Edition which is what we are driving. Our test model was extremely quiet inside there wasn't a creak, squeak, or rattle anywhere. This is a tight, well-constructed SUV. Ford is really concentrating now on SUVs and trucks. And it's a good thing they're getting this right because they need this to be right. If they're not gonna build cars anymore, with the exception of one or two models, then this thing has to sell. And this should sell because it's refined, it's well engineered, very well built, and with the wide range of trim levels available, you can make a Ford Explorer fit into whatever your lifestyle might be. It's well engineered too with excellent ergonomics. The height is perfect, making it easy to get in and out. The suspension provides good road feel, but is soft enough to provide a comfortable ride on long trips and on pothole-plagued city streets. The handling isn't quite like a car, but it isn't anything like a truck. The electric power-assisted steering and terrain management with different settings for different driving conditions like gravel, pavement, sand, and grass, it's all responsive. There's a hill descent feature to help you maintain control when coming down a steep grade, and curve control is available too. That feature will slow you down automatically if you are going into a corner too fast. Of course, it has anti-lock brakes too and airbags, all the standard safety equipment. The six-speed automatic transmission shifts with authority. It's smooth. It does not hunt for gears. It's solid. Choose the Sport or Platinum models and you'll get paddle shifters too. Our test model is equipped with a 3.5 liter V6. It's turbocharged. It produces 365 horsepower. Our test vehicle got about 16 miles per gallon in the city, 22 miles per gallon on the highway, so you do pay for that performance. You can also choose a non-turbo 3.5 liter engine with 290 horsepower or a 2.3 liter four-cylinder EcoBoost engine with 280 horsepower. All three engines provide enough low-end torque for towing and there are tow packages available. The exterior is attractive. The first Explorer was introduced way back in 1990. They were originally kind of boxy and they rode a little rough. Today's Explorer is more elegant though with a more attractive front end and lines that flow. Modern LED headlights and fog lights and tail lights blend into the overall design nicely. This platinum edition of the Ford Explorer has big, beefy 20-inch wheels. They're quite wide, and they really do enhance the handling. They're quite attractive. The available Ford Smart and Safe package includes blind spot and cross-traffic alert, lane keep assist, adaptive cruise, forward collision alert with brake support, rain-sensing wipers, and automatic high-beam headlights. Step inside this Platinum Edition and you're immersed in unexpected luxury. Take a look at these heated and cooled leather seats. It doesn't get much nicer than this. 
These are power seats with memory settings. Nice. Really, really nice. The leather dash, the leather inserts on the doors, the fine stitching. It's all very, very high end. Very refined. Coded or keyless entry, push button start, navigation system, it's all here. The headrest mounted DVD player and video screens will keep the kids or any backseat passengers entertained on long trips. Our test vehicle came with third row seating, providing enough room for up to seven people. All those rear seats fold down too, providing over 590 liters of cargo space when the third row is folded forward, fold down the second row as well, and it expands out to more than 1,200 liters of cargo space. It's huge in there, and all that space is provided with the simple push of a button. The seats stow away automatically as well, and flip back up just as easily. Now this feature is something Ford came up with. All you do is just wave your foot underneath the rear bumper and the rear hatch pops right open. Extremely convenient. The infotainment system is intuitive. It syncs to your iPhone or Android phone easily and the 500 watt Sony stereo in our test vehicle provided crisp, clean audio. The big volume button in the center of the console is a nice touch and the steering wheel audio controls make it easy and safe to change the radio station or adjust volume when on the road. The roof rack makes the Explorer even more practical. Even with all the features that come standard or as part of your trim package, there is even more you can add. Options like enhanced park assist put even more technology to work for you. We've been told Ford is developing an all new sixth generation of the Ford Explorer, but with a lot of testing, a lot of consumer feedback, and millions of miles under the Explorer's belt, Ford has had time to work out all the bugs on the current model. The result is the best Ford Explorer to date. It's a midsize SUV that offers exceptional value and remains competitive in its class. It's definitely worth a look. Rick Walker, SST Car Show News. Don't go away. When we come back, we'll take a look at Nissan Supercar and tell you how they've taken it to a whole new level. Hey friends, I'm Rick Walker. Welcome back to the SST Car Show. If you are into supercars, you know what the Nissan GT-R is all about. Uh, Nissan says it's the supercar. Now we've driven a, a couple of GT-Rs and they are an impressive vehicle, no question. But now Nissan has taken it to a whole new level by teaming up with Idle Design. So you're getting Italian design combined with Japanese supercar technology to produce a one-off supercar that is now on a world tour. They're calling it the Nissan GTR 50. Check this thing out. If enough people like it, it will go into limited production. GTR is passion. We're coming on 50 years of GTR and it's like I got this flashback of all of the great things. Uh, about GTR. I was at the, the Geneva Motor Show uh, about a year ago. I get a call to come to the Ital Design booth and uh, they had a proposition. We're discussing making a custom GTR to celebrate the history of GTR. And how do you take this Italian carrozzeria spirit with this Japanese science, borderline science fiction culture of GTR. And that's how it kind of started. As we are Italians and we have a very emotional brand, I think it's very important to cooperate with partners that you really, really like. And then when both are turning 50, it's very, very special. Designer is more. 
もうすぐ10度が高い車ですね広いアイデアが出てきたんですよ新規性の高いデザインからそのタイムレスにビューティーにいったこう広いアイデアが出てきてで結果的にこれやったのは当然両立してるやつなんですよ。The brutality of GTR, of the power of、uh, Japanese technology, and the Japanese love of racing.、Uh, this is the things that we really wanted to, to celebrate. GTR is more based on the screen, but the screen is more based on the screen. 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 シャシーを組んでいくわけですけどもシャシー手作りなんだけど精度がすごいいいんですよ。But it's a car that has mass. So the designers really studied about how to get this density of presence. We designed this kind of opening, almost catfish like grill that the current GTR has, and that the whole car starts to fold out of that,、um, that uh, first gesture. The way the rear end is cut away and exposing this all gold, foil, metallic, alloy. Uh, rear, I think, is so cool because it has this car inside of a car feeling. Design, the 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 design. I like especially the wing of it and the dynamics from the front and from the front lights. Just the perfect circle, that's GTR's signature. And it's very advanced and very technical, but still the romantic image of, of GTR. It's a very rare breed that is out there. What I love is the purity of an idea coming to life. Now, as we said, the Nissan GT R50 could go into very limited production. Nissan is talking about producing a maximum of 50 of these Nissan GT R50 supercars. Each one would sell for about $1.2 million,、uh, but only if there is enough interest in the vehicle. Well, one look at the car will tell you that there's probably going to be more than enough interest. Uh, for them to sell 50 units. The vehicle is on a world tour right now.、Uh, they're, I guess, assessing how much interest there is, gauging public response. And as we said, this is a collaborative effort between Nissan and Ital, Ital Design. So you're getting Italian design combined with Nissan modern Japanese supercar technology. Here's a look at what's going on.、Uh, With Nissan and the world tour of the GTR 50 right now in places like Monterey and other leading racetracks around the world, as they introduce this supercar with 750 horsepower to the public. Spectacular. To see this beast in person is wonderful. How the, the grill telescopes inside the engine bay and, and really celebrates the, the engine of the GTR, the heart of the GTR. To then have it here on the road and getting celebrated by many, many people today、uh, is humbling. 
experience. Here you have very creative people and the dreams of, of a very young man about a car, the history of 50 years, and then finding lines and shapes that then everyone says, that is it. That's the very first step. And then to work with Ital Design and make the dreams of shape and everything um, is, is a wonderful journey. People love it. They get it. It's a celebration of, of all of the engineers and the drivers who have made uh, GTR a legend. Don't go away. When we come back, we'll take you to a Firebird only show that happens every single year now. And we'll tell you everything you need to know about the Pontiac Firebird. Hey friends, welcome back to the SST Car Show. We take you now to a Pontiac Firebird only show at the Steve Plunkett Estate. This event happens every single year, and if you want to learn more about Pontiac Firebirds, well, this is everything you need to know. Every year, Firebirds and their owners flock to this car show at the Plunkett Estate. Three hours you yeah. drove. All show up. Wow. Yeah. And you're not uh, not disappointed. No. Even if I see one car, I'm not dis disappointed. <laughs> it's a Pontiac. This annual summer Firebird migration occurs each August. It's been that way for a few years. The event is restricted to Firebirds and Trans Ams. This is a 1979 Trans Am uh, Y84, all original, one owner car. I just bought it two years ago, and uh, oh, we're gonna get wet here. But uh, no, car of my dreams, I finally got it. And as you can, can see, I'm a big Trans Am fan. The first Firebird was produced in 1967 to compete with Ford's Mustang. From 67 to 2002, Firebirds came in many forms. Formula Firebirds, base models, big block pavement pounders, and of course, the iconic Pontiac Firebird Trans Am. The Trans Am was made famous by the Smokey and the Bandit movie franchise. Canada's best bandit car is on display here. It's owned by John Hockley, who organized this event. Yeah, this year's been fantastic. I mean, a, a little bit of rain uh, kept a few people away, but I mean, we just got under 100 cars, which is phenomenal for Trans Am. So really happy with what we've, we've accomplished here, and we've raised a lot of money for breast cancer research. Not only are Firebirds no longer produced Pontiac, as a car company, no longer exists. But this event is keeping the passion for these orphan cars alive. You can still find the passion here in this project car, owned by a teen who couldn't resist choosing a Firebird as his very first car. How long have you had your Trans Am? About a year. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. when I bought it, didn't run, didn't drive, kind of fixed it up in uh, my high school auto class. Did you do most of the work yourself? Yeah, I did. Um, it was. Mostly me, I didn't do the exhaust system. Um, I did the whole brakes. Uh, there's more stuff uh, I've done to it than I can even um, explain. More or less stock under here. Took the uh, emission stuff on it, off of it. Uh -huh. And I just got vacuum lines running into it, each other. And makes a, I'd like to think it makes a little more power. Than, uh, it probably does. So. Firebirds are a sister car to the Chevy Camaro. But Pontiac always turned up the style a notch with the Firebird, and the car always appealed to a slightly different kind of buyer. Firebirds always came with a wide range of options, but it didn't matter if you bought one with a six-cylinder engine, a 455 big block, a T-top version, or a hard top. They were always sporty, American muscle, attainable performance, Pontiac excitement. That's what Firebirds were all about. And keeping that excitement alive is what this Firebird and Trans Am only show is all about. Rick Walker, SST Car Show News.
Well, friends, that's all the time we have for today. So until next time, I'm Rick Walker reminding you, when you can't get to the car show, we will bring the car show to you online on our YouTube channel, on Facebook, and of course, at our website, sstcarshow.com. Multimedia Production.